welcome back to a much needed update on Project Electrolyte. The car has been running and driving since the last episode, but there's lots of fine details to iron out. So last episode I did finish the battery boxes, the rear battery box and the uh, front upper box. Uh, I did use two modules that I knew had to be replaced. One had some corros corrosion during shipping. The other one had a cracked coolant manifold. So I was unable to finish the battery cooling. But I did get power and that allowed me to troubleshoot the drive motor which was not receiving uh, ignition power. It was pin one here on the 23 pin connector. I got that ironed out. I got the car to move under its own power. I even drove it around with the hood sitting on the roof of the car. I have done this entire project completely solo with the exception of removing the hood. I had a neighbor help me with that. And then uh, now that it's running, my dad came over and we got the hood reinstalled. Really starting to finish the look of the car. I didn't have any windows in yet. Uh, the side windows are in, they will be replaced, but no uh, windshield or rear window. But with the car moving under its own power, I couldn't resist but to get some of the interior put in and make our first trip over to Sonic. I got the car licensed and insured. And so we made a quick trip to our neighborhood Sonic. This is with the family. Got my wife and three kids in the car. And we just had a great time. The kids uh, took advantage of the open air and uh, being silly like they are. The car, uh, it's not making any power. It, uh, everything was very detuned, but it was enough to, to get us there and back. And then I couldn't pass up an invitation from my good friend uh, at a school in Cherry Creek that he runs the aviation um, mechanic or uh, A&P department. So he invited us out there. And I got to hang out with some good friends. I've been hanging out with these cars for a long time. That 1968 Cougar, we used to cruise in high school uh, with my Dart, which I still have, and then that Mustang. Um, I was lucky, lucky enough to help put the turbocharger on it and uh, awesome car. I didn't have the cover on the rear battery box so with people around I just put these high voltage signs. And it's a, a nice way to keep people from touching the car anyway. If you suspect you're going to damage yourself it, it does uh, keep your distance. Got me thinking about all this weight in the back though. I decided to put some strut rods from the lower mount of the rear motor back up to where the leaf spring mounts. I thought I would just triangulate this load a little bit and uh, support that extra weight that is actually aft of the axle and motor. Also under the car I've been worried about this. Uh, this is the front of the drive motor. Uh, there's a motor mount here and I've seen that people break them in their Teslas so I thought I'd put a little reinforcement plate here. And also I use that as a shelf for my AC. So to convert the AC into a uh, mounting location, I uh, designed and plasma cut some brackets, which I folded up and welded. Now I decided to put this AC compressor under the car. I had plenty of room under here, so it's just mounted right to the subframe, the uh, Tesla subframe that I used and it uh, holds it up here. I've got plenty of room to run the the lines, the uh, suction side and the pressure side. And it just fits right here. So now this is kind of a dual purpose bracket. This bracket not only reinforces the upper motor mount, but uh, the motor mount helps support this bracket, which is um, also mounted directly uh, into the subframe. This was a challenging project because uh, I had never built a uh, standalone AC system. But with the right fittings, these are the AeroQuip uh, Easy Clip fittings. They go together real nice. And so running the lines was actually pretty straightforward. I used a the biggest condenser I could fit. I think this is a 28 inch condenser, 28 by 16. And uh, it had all the correct fittings. Um, that went in my system pretty easily. I also added a dryer from Vintage Air and a trinary switch. I got it all charged up and here it is uh, blowing at uh, 40 degree vent temp. It was just over 80 degrees when I made this video. Uh, I was drawing down some 
voltage there, watching the amperage. I'm not sure if this amp uh, meter is 100% accurate, but this is slow speed on the compressor, about 2,000 RPM. And then I ran it up to the full 6,000 RPM. It uh, uses a PWM controller to vary the RPM, which is nice. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to run it at probably 3,000 RPM. And then there's a thermostat. So I had this set down low so I could do my testing. This is an R134 system, so at 80 degrees, I was about uh, 45 PSI on the low side and just over 200 on the high side. As the uh, temperature crept up, the high pressure went up, but it cycles the fans uh, automatically. And then my new battery modules showed up. Um, these were packaged just excellent. They came in perfect condition. And so I immediately got them out, got them in wired in parallel so they could uh, balance with each other. But then I needed to drain the voltage down to match the car's battery pack because I can't wire the whole car with these in parallel. So I just uh, spliced away these wires that go to my Milwaukee M18 fan. And I fed them with 23 volts, uh, which that really made the fan spin. Uh, I needed to discharge about one volt and it took me almost 48 hours to do it this way but it worked now with the voltage all matching the car I can finally finish the battery cooling so this is the front box there's the lower module that I did not replace it was already in there and then I stacked the new one on top finished all the plumbing these fittings are pretty cool they they have kind of an o-ring and they snap down in clip on around the boss so with it all in I was able to hook up the pump and the wiring and the BMS wiring uh, I kind of look close the two I replaced are the bottom row here there's two rows of six cells and they match the rest of the car within uh, one hundredth of a volt so the BMS was happy right away fired up the coolant pump you can see this bluish green coolant flowing through and I had no leaks. That was uh, really nice to see. You can see it going through all the different fittings. I used these translucent fittings because I wanted to make sure the coolant was flowing properly. And I'll probably just leave them because they look cool and they're rated for the temperature and pressure I'm using. So we'll just go with it. And then this is the uh, trunk. I hadn't pressure tested this either. So the trunk, uh, no leaks back here either. So pretty happy with everything. This is the final return that goes through the charger and then back up to the radiator. So now we got battery cooling. Um, this is a 12 volt battery and this needs to be charged by the car with a DC-DC converter and it was not charging. So I had some troubleshooting to do here. The DC-DC converter, which I got from Stealth EV, be sure to check those guys out. They have some great parts. On the left here, you see this is a charger slash DC-DC converter. And it should be putting out roughly 14 volts to the 12 volt battery. It was not doing that, so I got some great tech support from Matt Haber at Stealth EV. He uh, kind of talked me through everything. We wanted to double check all of my wiring, which all checked out. Uh, I didn't have to make any modifications there. So we got into the settings inside the, uh, the Stealth charger. Turns out there were some CAN messages that were missing that turn on the DC-DC converter. So uh, just a little bit of online tech support here. He logged into my computer and we went through all the settings. He was excellent. Uh, it was really nice to have this help. We got all the messages loaded and now it's uh, charging at 13.8 um, to 14 volts, just like an alternator would. And that keeps the 12 volt battery charged up. Next was the high voltage charger. So behind the license plate here uh, where the gas tank filler used to be is where I placed my charger and I'm just kind of a rolling dad joke here with this charger license plate cover uh, that's just the location of the charger not the kind of car so I got it plugged in and it's not connecting it's just it says it's waiting on a car signal so more troubleshooting uh, suspected a bad charger so I drove it over to a public charger which I figured would work and I had the exact same symptom at the public charger. So with a little bit of uh, research online, I did find a troubleshooting guide from Orion BMS. And I plugged the charger back in at home, logged in on the computer, 
started stepping through the uh, proximity signal and what voltages should be what. And it turns out it, uh, it blamed it on the switch, the cutoff switch and disconnect uh, latch right here shown on the top of the, uh, the charge port. It looks good here, but when I, since I have a spring-loaded license plate, it perfectly pushes on that button and was disconnecting the charger. So it was an ins installation error on my part. I need a little kickstand for this license plate. Charger works fine. Here it is putting out 31.3 amps. And now uh, plug it in. I'm able to monitor everything through the BMS. Uh, all those red boxes are balancing, so it's... Uh, getting close to the max voltage that I wanted. So it's uh, kind of shunting off some of the high cells to balance them all out. And it'll uh, top off at 4.1 volts per cell. That's uh, not, you can go up to 4.2, but I, I don't need that kind of range right now. So I'm just keeping it a little bit lower for longer overall battery health and life. So now I can get a uh, full charge, just plug in that fires up my smart wire, runs the battery coolant, uh, charging is working perfect. So on to the motor settings. There are a bunch of them. These are all kind of inverter settings, which I'm trying to wrap my head around. Um, I started to up some of them and figure out where the, the restrictions were. And now it's making a little bit of power. getting pretty fun now. Um, I am driving it around, cruising in my neighborhood. Uh, I took it to Home Depot, over to Ace to get some bolts, um, run into a couple people, get to talking about it. It's, it's uh, starting to become a lot of fun. I also had a little bit of fun with this uh, emblem here. I took a demon logo, gave it some lightning bolts. I actually have a t-shirt available if you're a super fan. I'll have a link to my Etsy store. You can order a t-shirt in your size. And I do appreciate, if uh, you want to see the videos coming in the future, it's going to be fun. Give me a like and a subscribe, and uh, we'll be making a lot more. <laughs>